Hey guys, what's up with Wolf Your One Only? How all my adventures going? Hopefully you guys are having a fantastic day. Uh, we're finally going over the concept map that I created for ISTA. Now, ISTA is basically the birthplace of adventures, as you guys can see. This is Island 1. It's just not like one island that I have. And I've been going through different programs for at least searching for different programs to make the concept map. And I stumbled upon, let's see, I'm pretty sure I still have it saved, right? I stumbled upon this site. And this is how I made it. But, you know, this is yearly cost. They gave me like 11 day free trial. This site isn't half bad, honestly. It's it's all right, especially since so far I see it as the only fantasy map creation so far. But yeah, this is the best site I've seen so far for fantasy. And people are like very creative with these maps, like extremely creative. Like it has a lot of potential. It's just learning it, and. With the whole 11 day trial thing, it, it does give you like quite a bit of time to learn it. Obviously, but I don't know if I want to keep using this just yet. Oh, that that's actually pretty neat, too, that you can just do stuff like this. I say people made ray guns out of it as well. I do remember somebody making like a whole quest board thing as well, which is actually pretty neat as well. Uh, most like. I think it's up here still. Yeah, here it is. And these are, it's weird because a lot of this is like map related stuff. And they somehow figured out how to make, you know, actual features. <gasps> oh, God. Excuse me. Which is like, like I said, isn't that bad. I mean, I just use it for like a mini concept. And once I get to the point where I want to actually, you know, put in the actual map itself, I can just get an artist to, you know, put it all together. I could get mono. I could get somebody else, but I don't want to put too much work on mono, honestly. So that's why I'm just sticking them to Monster Girls at the moment. They could do NPCs, but I might find a different artist for NPCs. It just really depends and what goes on there. But um yeah, let's go ahead and get into like each area and kind of what idea I have for it. So the initial idea is well, Starter Town is where you start, obviously. I haven't came up with an actual name for the Starter Town just yet, so it's just Starter Town at the moment. Uh Pixie Forest, well, Starter Town is basically one of the mini hub areas. So you'll be able to go to like a blacksmith, uh, alchemist, you know, to make your potions and stuff like that. And quite a few other things I have planned for the towns. Since they're going to be the hub areas to access, you know, the map and just go to certain areas. Maybe I'll have a quality of life to where you get like a. To where you get like maybe a teleport or a, you know, mini teleporter to where it just you can just open it, select where you want to go. I'll probably do that as a quality of life unless, you know, I did just do Steam Workshop and somebody makes it themselves. But we'll we'll see how that goes in the far future. But next one is Pixie Forest. Pixie Forest is basically where I'm going to have quite a more forest set of mustard girls so let's say i got pixies fairies a little bit of bug related monster girls or bears you know things like that that i can have inside of this forest and this forest will be a dungeon obviously 
I guess I'll talk a little bit initially of how these dungeons, you know, are formed. And going off a little bit of some anime logic, you know, there is typically a boss of a dungeon that has a high mana influence and creates a dungeon. Now, this dungeon can be created in multiple different ways from either a high influence of a certain item, like a Monster Girls can become excess with like a certain theme. Let's say, for example, a circus. You know, a Monster Girl is like extremely influenced by a circus to the point where she has an exception to where she has an obsession. And that exception warps into a dungeon that is very circus focused so that is how these dungeons are pretty much influenced just just a smaller bit of it i don't want to like spoil too much but that's mainly how the influence is gonna go so basically pixie forest is the first trial of becoming an adventurer because your objective is to get through it and go to Nove cave no cave is basically where beginner adventurers go to take their true tests and conquer the cave. But then again, now that I think about it, as I'm saying this, I think I might have... Yeah, I think I might have a guard escort you guys through the pixie forest and have you guys do the beginner cave. That sounds more reasonable instead of like just taking guys to the force to experience, experience an outer dungeon. It's probably best if I have like a guard in a story that takes you through the pixie forest all the way up here. And he'll teach you along the way, you know, stuff like that. Maybe like a little story section that's in here. Yeah, actually, that sounds that actually does change my mind a little bit on how I initially had things. It's a good thing I'm doing this video. I'm going to actually put that down in some notes. OK, now that that's noted. So Nove Cave. Nove can have uh, some various different creatures inside of it. Um, so Nove, I would probably only put in low ranking Monster Girls. Since it's supposed to be a beginner dungeon. Maybe some little special encounters of, you know, powerful ones. That's something I've been wanting to do as well. Just surprise the player with maybe a strong one that shows up out of nowhere. You have to defeat it. Could be. I could do that. I could not. Who knows? We'll see. So Nov gave good end up being cobots it can either be hmm what are some other it can be cobots it can be probably some mushroom girls it can be bats Let's see what else could it be could it be some um maybe a golem nah nah golem seems like very very strong. So I, I guess I wouldn't choose a golem. Probably some nocturnal treat now. Hmm. Because I don't want to put goblins in there. Because we already have a goblin hideout. Oh, I could put maybe a, you know, mouse or rat girl in there as well. I don't think, uh... I would actually have anything else significant inside of there. Since this is just the starter cave. But I would actually actually put in some low encounter special monster girls in there as well. But that's pretty much the idea of what I have for that. Um, I guess we'll talk about Goblin Hideout as well. Goblin Hideout has probably a lot of different goblins now that I think about it. Because I've had ideas for a goblin with spears, um, archer, and I don't want to spoil it. 
And it also has like a legendary monster girl in it called Goblin Hero Dyra. I'm actually saying it like these are set in stone in game of bosses for a certain area. They're really not. These are like rare encounters. Or either I'm going to have a puzzle for them to figure out how to encounter that monster girl. Then I'm probably going to have a stage to where it's a guarantee of running into her after the first time of defeating her and accessing it. That would probably be the best thing to where people who want to like actually farm like a really good stat one. Next is Hidden Cave. So actually, I think I was thinking about putting the Cobalts here and put like mining related monster girls inside of here. I didn't want to make it all themed. So I, I made a few of them that are themed. But you will still encounter different monster girls in here that aren't miners. And I was thinking about putting golems inside of the hidden mines. Now, the reason I call it the hidden mines is because I do want NPCs to be influenced on dungeons. And when I say that is I want players to be able to talk to NPCs. And the NPCs give hints. And those hints, well, what, what, what should I call it instead? Should I say... I guess for adventures, it'll be information. Just normal information. Something like that. They give you like a tip to where a certain place is. And once you talk to them, maybe it'll initially start up with question marks on the map. But you click on it and you go there, you know, then hidden mines. So basically, let's say there's an NPC inside of a library and you go to talk to them a few times or they require an item for you to go find. You bring the item back, you know, sort of like a little fetch quest to unlock an area. And they give you like information on like a place on a map. So let's say this. So let's say this NPC wants, you know, a core from a slime girl. And you grab that, take it back to them. Then they give you like a scoop, the scoop on some, some cove over here. Then once you go back to the map, boom, that cove is showing up on the map. Now it, there's a lot of things I can do with that. I do want NPCs to be, you know, useful. Instead of just being there for story and comedy, stuff like that, I want them to, you know, actually have a purpose. So that's something I kind of aim towards as well. So Midnight Cave is mostly going to be a giant skull cave, which is kind of why I put the cave there. And it's going to be... I wanted to have, like, waterfall coming out the eyes. So, you know, you can go in there and encounter a few water monster girls. But for this dungeon, I actually wanted it to be difficult. So that's also another thing. Um, Midnight Cave, I wanted to put in. I'm trying to remember what it was. I had, I had a set list of monster girls I kind of wanted in there. Hold on. Let me pull. Let me pull it up. It's quite a bit of influence here. Cyclops is one of them. I wanted there to be a Cyclops in there. Uh, what else? Can you guys tell that I'm trying to keep as secretive as I can on how many Monster Girls I have planned? Or at least are going to put inside of each of these dungeons? I plan on putting a lot in each dungeon, but I don't want to spoil, like, so many of them. Uh, Cave Woman is one of them that I want to put in there. But she'll actually have like a different name. Siren is probably going to be Howling Cove instead, actually. Sprite Forest actually might have like a lot of monster girls in it. Or I could make, make it like a different forest over here somewhere. I guess that concept map could change a lot. Because now I think about it, Sprite Forest would have way, way too many monster girls. 
and I would want to spread them out between like different islands and stuff too. I mean, I purposely left a lot of like dungeons off of this map just because I wanted to put it on a probably a second map. And not only that, there's a few places here I don't want to like show and spoil. I do want a werewolf mount. A werewolf mount. Werewolf monster girl inside of here as well. Just to fit the theme of moonlight cave. Uh, slime cave. It's going to be filled with a lot of slime girls. Which apparently a lot of people like slime girls. <laughs> which, which does help me out a lot. Because I have a lot of different designs about slime girls. Um, I don't want to... I don't want to like spoil too much. God damn. Uh, this is difficult to try and keep a lot of things a secret, but also keep you guys interested. So there could be a few bug related monster girls inside of uh slime cave and midnight cave. And this area over here is more of a story based thing like his own separate like little side story to where I want to like leave little notes around for players to pick up and get what happened to this area over here and the story is going to be related to one of the main NPCs so I want to keep that <laughs> that under wraps as much as I can but this will probably be more of darker themed area. And when I mean darker themed, I mean, I'm not going for the whole kid friendly. Obviously, I'm not going for kid friendly, you know, type of stuff. I'm actually going to make, you know, the story more. Well, at first, I didn't want to, like, make a story. I wanted you to make your own adventure. But I did want to add in, like, little stories of the world into the map as well so this is a little side story and you know lore for one of the NPCs and I wanted to make you know some dark little side stories and maybe they would influence a second game that I want to work on maybe we'll see but it's it's not that I just want to, like, kill characters left and right. I just literally want a, you know, side side quest that, you know, gives a little bit of more shock type of situations. Obviously. Had to correct something on the Monster Girl list. I don't want to spoil this for sure but mysterious island is gonna be well these two areas over here is gonna be the end of this island and it'll give you more lore of how the outbreak of monster girls and dungeons even started but the beginning obviously as name is more of the main focus of how the monster girl and outbreak started and no, nah, I'm gonna I'm not gonna say it. <laughs> but yeah. I have a lot of things as well to talk about as well. Sort of the warp pirate ship is gonna be more navy and pirate theme. A lot of sea sea monster girls over here and over here. This will probably be the final final stage just because you would have to get past this to go to the next island or get to the main island itself or get to the mainland itself so obviously sea empress lair would probably be the absolute final dungeon of this whole map and that's about as much as i want to reveal i don't want to reveal any more from there also because, like I said, some things are subject to change as well. 
but hopefully gotten you guys a little bit more interested and hopefully confused because I wanted I want you guys to stay confused because I don't want you guys to figure out too much. All right. So don't look too far into it. <laughs> I have lots of different ideas that I am currently combating combating right now. And this concept map definitely helped with a lot of different situations that I was actually overthinking and actually now have a simpler solution for. So with that said, I'm going to end it off there. I'm going to go more than likely play games with friends today. But uh, with that said, until then, peace out. Uh, wait, 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 wait. I have one more question for you guys. So there is, we have talked about the whole uh, dungeon creation thing. Um, I was wondering, would you guys prefer the square by square dungeon exploration, or would you guys like a preset map that links all together in exploring it, but it wouldn't be fully randomized? Because with the square by square, sort of like um. Sort of like Binding of Isaac. Binding of Isaac, like you go room to room to room. Sort of like this. Would you guys prefer this? Because this, I could fully randomize and loot randomize as well with each room. Or I can have the preset map. Or I can have a preset map to where the player will always know the layout and I can just randomize the loot locations. That would be the only different thing there. So I'm going to actually put up a poll inside of the community tab. Now, before you guys actually like see this video poll inside of my community tab, and you guys can go and, you know, look inside of there and choose which one you guys are more interested in the square by square. I can randomize loot and the layout of dungeons to where it'll never be the same. Most of the time, it'll never be the same, but it'll be kind of like Binding of Isaac to where you go from floor to floor, well, not floor, from room to room to room to room to send down a floor type of situation. Now, we can do that. Either that or we can do uh, the other thing I was talking about, which is the preset. The preset map would be probably five different layouts of the map. It will be randomized to get a certain layout, but you would over time know exactly where loot is and where they spawn. That would be the thing I was thinking about is like, couldn't that be like less interesting if I did it the whole pre layout versus like square by square? So you guys let me know which one you're more interested in. Now, I will see you guys in the next one. Until <laughs> then, peace out.